I can cut everything out if we want. No, you don't got to cut nothing out. Well, we'll see what's how it goes. You know, like we're sitting here in the garage enjoying this Florida weather. It's family's bonding. Two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> quarter to three. Get quarter to three. You're I'm like sorry, woman. man. No, it was like two o'clock. No, it's quarter to three. Get it straight, lady. Well. <laughs> Zach, how are you? Oh, good, pal. Been, uh, what, a year since I saw you last? Yes, sir. Wow. Didn't think you were ever coming back. Yeah, I, I was in my own little world. That's all right, as long as you remember where your home is. Now I got a new, uh, new plan. Anyways, where did we meet? We actually started in Daytona um, at the Speedway. We met there. Uh, I was with Swift, you were with your company. You were next to us, side by side. And you were running Swift motorcycles. With Joe Newton, Newton. And uh, you were in charge of setting up the vendor space. Setting up vendor spaces and wrenching, you know, warranty work that would come in that we could do in the trailer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was my job every day. Set up, breakdowns. I know, I know the gig. I didn't do it as long as you did or as many times as you did. You know, it, 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 with modern technology, they were still old school, you know, with the old slide the thing through the track. You know, you take a little piece, slide through the track, put a zipper on it, but, uh, you know. Yeah. We did everything old way. You know. That was like my, I wouldn't say that was my first rally, <laughs> but I was doing the, you know, as That vendoring. was one of your bigger rallies. Yes, I was vendoring uh, Tower Machine, which was open primaries. You know, if you remember, that was... When you went to Daytona, that was the area everybody wanted to be at. Yes, it was expensive. Redneck was there. Everybody that was anything was there at that area. Yes. You know, we were, we were, you know, Borgette was there, and Redneck was there. Uh, Russell Mitchell, you, us, um, Victory was there. Um, you, you had them all there in that area. You know, it was a popular area to come. And, what uh, year was that? Uh, Let's see, I think I got going around... 02? I was going to say 02 or 03. Something like that. Because the bikes were just just getting good then. There was not... You know, all the components were good. Um, after 04, Swift stepped down in their control box and they were more exposed, but they were a cheaper one. They would get damp inside from water. Okay. And we were having issues with that. I gotcha. And, it's, and, and 04 actually started with Iron Horse... American Iron Horse was having issues with their bikes, but it was like, they came out strong because the industry was strong and then it was starting to cut down a little bit. So everybody was cutting back on shit. And you could see it in the quality of shit we were getting. Okay. You know, uh, it was a big issue. It, was, it, it hurt us a lot, you know, because it was just a common, and, and we were replacing with the same shit. So it wasn't like- You were fixing it. You fixing were... it, we're just, Taking a bad one, putting another one in a matter of time, that gets damp, it's going bad, we're gonna have to change it again. Okay. You know, and, so and, there's no and you hope that during the warranty time that all happened, because afterwards, you know, it was like a 150 for the part, and then, you know, another 100 bucks to put it on. Yeah. And it was a matter of a couple of screws and some wires, okay. and it was down in the bottom of the bike. You could actually get to it without tearing the whole bike apart. Gotcha. You know, but yeah. Yeah, it was it was crazy times. I mean, as far as like the way I got there is through Rossmeyer, you know, mm -hmm. Bruce Rossmeyer's uh, actually his private pilot got me that space because well, I. Well, you did. know, it's funny. You met Joe first, I guess, or you knew Joe. Yeah, I don't. And remember. he was at the house and said, "Hey, the guy beside us, you got to you got to meet Jason. He's a great guy. You're going to get a kick out." Of him. <laughs> and I met you that next morning, and it was like, "Wow, this is this is great. We're going to have a good time here," you know. And we did. <laughs> oh yes, we did. <laughs> and yeah, they were. They were the memorable moments, you know. We we, we we partied in business at the same time, you know. Yep. We put in a day's work and we partied a day's work, but we still met people. And, you know, um, and even Joe will tell you, you know, I, I stopped there because I always went to the strip clubs. Yep. And I went there and made an arrangement because like, I was like, dude, I got to pay $10 a night to come in here. So if I bring Danny in, it's 20 bucks a night plus drinks. So I went there and said, listen, you know, I got this company. We want to come in. I'm going to bring so many people. And they go, okay, well, if you're going to bring people in, then you get in free. Just tell them use this password and you go upstairs. Yep. Well, you know, Russell will come by and say, where are we going? Strip club. Just tell me which Swift. That's the call site. You call back stairways. And it got to be, we were up in the VIP section. We was like six people. And by the middle of the week, we had 20 people up there. Easily, you know? easily. And um, 
you know, and we did spend money. I mean, our bar tabs every night were crazy. Um, well, we tend uh, we tend to drink a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a couple of nights there we hit six hundred. A couple of nights were a thousand dollars. You know, um, we did we did party, but in the meantime we're mi mingled bigger and bigger. You know, like Russell came out, and then he brought somebody that was yep. in it. So it was like everybody was bringing somebody in the industry, which increased people to know different people. You know. And for me, you know, coming there, you know, I actually did more business at after hours. Oh yeah, because, because you met R Russell and you met Vince from yeah, you know, so Redneck. Yeah, yeah, you got to meet those people. You, you know, Brad came. You know, had you know you had um, uh, Redneck there, and then Nancy Geiger, G Gunther. I don't know if you ever met her, but she did a lot of the. She did the metric build off with Brad. Okay. Oh, we, yeah, I think I met her. Yeah. Really beautiful looking girl. Met her in Daytona. Danny met her first in Vegas when she was out there shopping for our bike show that we put on. That I put on with, with Bob in Atlantic City. Okay. And she, she got her to come out and got Mondo to come out. She got Eddie Trotter to come in. And I met her. I always saw her, but I first met her in Daytona and then she came to Atlantic City. She, she, didn't they have like a little group of girls? Uh huh. That her and Shorty. Shorty, yes, Shorty was from Shorty. Uh, Massachusetts. Yep, she's still kind of in it. Okay, uh, I talk to her regularly. Um, but Nancy now is in Georgia. She's in Georgia too. She was in Chicago. She's still kind of puttering around. Well, the, the industry, the bike just, industry, yeah. ain't out of her blood. Yeah. So you know, that's interesting. Yeah, well, well, yeah. yeah. We did, I, I just, you know, met more people there than I, what, during the day. Well, you know what's funny? You got into the strip club, and you know people would come by during the day, or would call Joe, or call me and say, "Hey, where are we hanging out tonight?" You know, because everybody kind of thought we were rolling in a different place, and it was like, "We'll be at the strip club." You know, okay, well I'll be there. And by eleven o'clock, everybody was there. You know, well yeah, because the, the routine was like everybody had to go home, go out to dinner, get their food. Yeah, and, and then they finally you know showed come up back little, to us. Yeah, but it was to the point where, like I said, you know. <clears throat> Friday night was light. Saturday we would get a couple more. Sunday, and then before you know it, you know you had Russell inviting people. You had yep. Vinny bringing people. We had we had a group of people that were all business people in the industry and related some way or somehow we intertwined. You yep. know, and um, and my product was a little difficult. It's heavy. It's a little bit more expensive. So, but it was something people looked at. Yep. Because everybody wanted to open primary, but. Wait a minute, who makes them? Oh, the gentleman's right here. You know, you talk to one or two people, they may not buy it, but they know somebody says, hey, I'm looking, oh, wait a minute, I got this guy I met in Daytona. And, you know, it just took off from there. Yeah, it was, you know, the sales I, were. I met Roger, and then he ended up building me a bike. I got rid of my Swift and bought the one he bought, built me, and that was 51000 Roger. That chopper. Burdett. Oh, okay. You know, and then I got to be invited out to his shop in Arizona. Yeah. Met Bridget, went through the whole shop for a whole day, watching a bike being produced and stuff. Then I went to the American Iron Horse shop. Joe got me to go through that, so I saw that. And then I also got to see at the time there was AMC American Motorcycle. Yep. Got to see those guys, you know. So it was kind of fun to go to Arizona and see the different builds. You know, um, at that time of the year when we were into it. We always brought the bankers with us. Morris always had a banker on, on, on the site. Okay. So we had never had a problem buying. It. Like if you had somebody who wanted something and really needed to finance, we could have brought the banker and sent them to you, and the bank would have paid you. And you know. Yep. But we, you know, if you wanted the bike, you didn't wait to them to go find a bank. Come on, let's go inside, sit with the banker. Yep. And you knew in 20 minutes it'd be Zach. Go get that bike, PM, and get it ready to go. You know. Uh, it was the way it rolled. It was it was fun. It was enjoyable. It was it was a, those two weeks at a at a crack were were a workout though. Yeah, we did work. I mean, you work all day long in the heat and the sun, and then you go home, you take a shower, and say you're not going out, but we went yeah, out. Yeah, we went out, and you know, and then you partied your ass off. <laughs> but in the meantime, you you kind of met different people. Sometimes each night you met somebody different or new. You know, this guy does that. That guy does this. This one does that. You know, and you're like, oh. You know, Jay from American, uh, what was American? Uh, yeah, American, uh, the TV show. No, no, no. The, the fo What's the front ends? American. Jay. American Suspension. Huh? American Suspension? Yes. But that's yes. not Jay. That's, um, 
That was Jay and somebody else, wasn't it? The tall guy. Yeah. Um, Vi Vince. Vince I thought, from American Suspension. Suspension. Yeah, he yeah. did the front ends and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. I, well, I thought Jay was involved with him. Because then Johnny. The only Jay I remember was. Uh, Johnny and Jay would do the. Uh, yeah, Bartell. But yeah. he was a TV show guy. Yeah, he would do all the video and yes, stuff. Yes. You know, and he would come out with us. And, that, and he was that with was, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle Smith. Yes. She's down in Miami now. Okay. And I talked to her regularly. And they, you know, it was kind of a circle that, you know, yep. they would, hey, I got Jason Tower here. You know, they would take pictures. A lot of times we didn't know they were even taking pictures. Yep. No, I hung but, around with Johnny and, and Jay quite yeah. a bit a little bit here yep. and there. Yep. So. It was a crazy industry, dude. Well, it's, it was a period of time where, you know, it was, a, I don't want to call it a fad because there's still choppers out there. There's still. They're out there. And, uh, you know, going, it's funny you say that because going to Arizona and, uh, you know, Cheyenne, Wyoming, places like that, choppers are like far and few. And I, I had asked. I've asked a couple people out there, why don't we ride choppers out here? They're like, too much. All these turns we got. That's why we sent them to the East Coast. Okay. So basically, choppers were the East Coast. And you're you're from New Jersey, right? Yep. yep. Yes. And then, and, uh, uh, how did you ever like get to Florida? Then? I mean, I mean, you were doing the rallies. You were still well, in New Jersey, weren't you at the time? Yeah, I used to come down here for two weeks. I used to take off work. Okay. And then I would take off two weeks to go to Myrtle Beach. Okay. You know. Uh, I bought the Swift, and then I had an issue with it. And when I called out the Swift, they said, "Listen, are you going?" I said, "Because I'm going to Myrtle, but I want to make sure it runs." We're going to Jersey. I mean uh, Daytona. Our trailer will be there. His name's Joe. Meet him. Well, it was Thursday. I rolled up to the trailer, and here he is by himself putting the fucking trailer together. Is that enough? Yeah, I said, well, listen, uh, you need some help? I told him who I was, and you know, I had a little issue. He goes, okay. He goes, well, you ain't got nothing to do. I said, no, I I got nothing to do. I'll give you a hand. And lo and behold, I set the whole canopy up with him, the whole thing, rolled all the bikes out. So he said, you know, let me take you out to dinner. I said, oh, no, it's okay. And the next day I went there, and... Uh, they worked on my bike, and I hung out with Joe all day. I was talking to customers. They asked me about my bike. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, every day after that, I was at the trailer. And then it was Sunday. We started packing up the trailer. Mm -hmm. Monday morning, I helped and broke down the canopy and everything, packed the trailer up. I went home. He said, well, I'll be in Myrtle Beach if you want to come. And we, then we started talking regularly. Yep. Uh, I said, well, I'll be there. On Thursday, he goes, well, the truck will roll in on Thursday morning. We're going to be at Broadway by the Bay, Broadway by the Beach. Yep, bro. Yep. And uh, if you want to help me, I go, I'll be there. Awesome. And, you know, I went to the strip club, talked to Ben there. He set up, you know, our thing, my thing for me, for the art, my people. Okay. It even got so good that, you know, Morris got to fly his helicopter and land on the helipad out back there. <laughs> and... Um, you know, the whole week I was with Joe and Myrtle, and he said, look, you stay with me. Don't go get in a place and all, you know. And uh, that's how it got it started. Just kept, it just kept rolling. Now we're like, you know, bosom buddies. Yeah. I haven't uh, talked to Joe in a few but it years. Was a, but it was um, an adventure. I mean, I kind of look forward to it. And he's like, hey, there was a big weekend in Atlanta at so-and-so, and that was where... Um, Oh God, can't think of his name. There was a dealer there that was selling Swifts. They were doing an open open house. They were setting up there. He asked me if I'd come. So I went down for the weekend, set up there. <clears throat> and then in between all that, I'm I'm running weekends with Brad in Baltimore, yep. North Jersey, you know, all over the place on the east up here. You know, uh, I just was, I never had a problem with a bike. <laughs> and being with them guys, I got to learn a lot more how to do my own work. Okay. You know, um, like I, I took your old primary that I had sitting around. I put it on Franco's bike with no problem, with no instructions. I, I put it together from memory. You know, and I could, I could change my own oils. I can do almost any of that. You know, build, rebuild my calibers, rebuild my carburetors. You know, Brad showed me how to do shit. 
And that's you Brad know, from The Wrench. The Wrench. And uh, it's just the things that I learned by just being around different people, you know, asking questions and how would you fix this? And he goes, well, if you're shooting troubleshoot, you do this. If you're doing that, check this, check that before you do this. A lot of guys will say, rip this out before, you know. And that's half the battle. I mean, I, I remember Brad and, you know, he's very intelligent man, mm. built frames and stuff, but he was there to always help you know was, oh, definitely. It, you know and that i think that's where if we find a person that even myself if i find a person that is willing to learn like wants to learn i have no problem sitting there uh, oh like i told you many times he said listen quit your job come on down and run my shop for me while i'm on the road and i'll as many times as i want to i was scared i was afraid that if i messed up i'd get fired now i got no job and you know i didn't know how much i didn't i didn't really realize how much trust he had in Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it was it was fun to be around because there, there was times I'd come down for a week and stay at the house and just be at the shop every day with him. Yep. Just feed the pipes in, watch the machine bend it, do the hit, the, see it hit the tack welds here and there, pop the frame out, boom, put it on the table, hit all the welds, and take off from there. You know how to mount an engine, how to mount the tranny. It was, and I was working with uh, Brad on a single sided swing arm. Mm -hmm. before he passed away yes and uh, so I mean I was trying to help develop something on that and that was the one that he used when he built the uh, metric revolution bike we took the Suzuki 1500 Boulevard that was called the metric revolution you had to take the engine and the tranny out of the bike okay and build it American well build it as like a chopper or build it as a bike but it had to be built with American yep. only those two parts and, and we ran into an issue there to tell you about it. I don't know if he ever told you. He had it all mounted up, put the transmission all in, started up, the wheel's going backwards. The <laughs> transmissions are backwards. Oh, really? So we had to redesign it so the transmission would be on the other side to go the right way. Gotcha. But it was backwards and it was shaft driven. But that's where he did the um, single single axle. Uh, single side swinger. Yeah. And that's where he used that at. Yeah, it's, I mean, he had some of the designs, but, you know, I think he had a lot of money invested in, like, other machine shops, because I don't think he was very much into machining his own parts. He was, he was a frame builder, and yes. he knew how to do that. Yeah, but and, and came, he had a lot of orders for frames, but, you know, like, the guys weren't putting them out quick enough, and they weren't. Yeah. Brad had specs. Well, in that, in that time frame, though, it was tough to get anything. Yeah. I mean, the, the demand was so big at those years that we you know all of us were fighting to keep up i mean christ he would he would do 60 frames no problem yep i mean that's constantly feeding that machine feeding that machine feeding the machine throw them out on the table throw them out on the table and in the meantime he still serviced bikes did work on bikes for guys you know everybody that knew him wanted him to work on the bikes because he was that kind of a guy that, yep you know he looked at it and know okay this is what the problem is and you know and i've seen guys build these bikes and they put they make them the stretch bikes, and they got this fucking six foot chain, and it's just flapping in the wind, and you can see where it's banging off the frame. Yep. And I asked him, why don't you put like a, a roller there, and with a little spring load, so it has a little bit of tension, enough on the chain, that the chain ain't slapping again. Oh, I, I never thought about something like that. I, you know, I don't know if we could do that. I'm like, yeah, you can. <laughs> I mean, because Brad did that. You know, we yep. have them chain stretch that, you know, you don't have the slap in it keeps the tension on it at all times so we would put that nylon wheel yep and it was enough tension that the chain just had a little bit but it you and know. you'd be surprised how much those chains stretch oh yeah high, high RPMs. oh believe me it's it's a steel chain but yet they stretch you they can grow so much and if you're one of them hard pounders it stretches faster than you think yep. you know but he, i know on my bike you know i had uh Originally, it was a soft tail, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a belt system on it, and I had that SNS 124 from SNS, you know. And I snapped two belts, and at that point, I was like, mm -mm, "That's it. I'm done." I, I moved to a chain, and yep, you know. But even that, you know, if you don't stay with it and watch it, like you said, that yeah. thing will get to a point where if it's flapping enough, it starts wearing the teeth wrong. Yep. You don't get them to fall in like they should, and now they're like they're pointing out and it. It does take a beating on them. You got to know what you're doing. You, service is important. You got to watch it. You got to, you know, a lot of guys just get on these bikes and ride them to death. And then all of a sudden it breaks down. It's like, oh, it's fucking parts were cheap. And, you know, 
dude, you pounded the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> I mean, we had a guy come in. I, I think you were there. And we did. T I think Joe was talking to you about it. Guy comes in and says, oh, I'm having a problem with my chain and, and my, my, my tire's wobbling. Okay, it's a brand new bike. It's only three months old. Yeah. There ain't a thread left on the back tire. I guess you were doing burnouts because yeah, you, you, you know you blew the bearing inside and the wheel's doing this. Gotcha. So now we got to be the the, the the ones that eat that because you beat it. Yeah. It's under warranty, you know. So new chain, new sprocket, new rim, new bearings, new axles, you know. And the guy's like, "Well, how long is this gonna take? What's well, gonna take two days to get the chip here, you know, from the, from uh, Arizona?" Like, oh, uh, you know. And Joe was going to give him a bike, and then I was like, Joe. You gonna give him a bike when he does this shit? I said we're gonna get a bike back that looks like that. I go, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we can't do that. The, the company says it's not allowed. You know. Yeah. But he beat it to death. I mean, he that tire was beat. You could see that it was beat that bike. And it's oh, just it's, it's, it's just the shit we ran yeah. into. I have plenty of customers that. Uh... I mean, many times the bikes were brought in on pickup trucks, and. Uh, the components were going bad. We, you almost knew what it was. I remember one time in Daytona, guy comes to me, and he put on a, a primary of mine, right? He comes over to my booth and says, I broke the backing plate. I'm like, what do you mean you broke the backing plate? You know, you know that big, yeah, thick, you know, yeah. but it's, it gets thin up by on the motor, you know? It's right. pretty thin. That's, kind of, that's where it got pro. So I wound up, Tearing it all apart for him, putting him on a new backing plate, all that stuff. Got him up and running. He was super happy because he came, I think, from the East Coast, you know, North, yeah. like New Jersey, New York. And, um, you know, he was all happy that I, you know, because he came all the way down there. He was thinking about going back. So I got him hooked up, got him set up. And he got the weekend or a week or whatever he spent there, you know, and, and he was real happy. And uh, actually to the point where his wife actually sent me a card a thank you card because he was like so bummed out that he he was you know he was down he was done for the nope, weekend yeah done, done for the ride so anyway so he gets in i put the new backing plate on. i don't know it was a month month and a half later he calls me up it broke again and here the problem was the frame i don't remember who the frame builder was but they had the transmission was not they didn't set the transmission right so the the, the transmission plate was Kilt, tilted, right? Oh no, that'll, that'll and it basically was putting so much twist on to yeah. yeah. It was when you you got to spacer the the transmission, uh -huh. and that I don't again I don't know who the frame manufacturer, right. but after we figured that out, I, I never heard of it again. But to break that backing plate is just like that don't happen. And and actually we stripped out a bolt on the on the motor, so I had to race around. I drilled it out right there in the grass. I drilled it out, heel coiled it. Got him back. That's why he was. It took me, I don't know, four or six I hours I to get that done. I, I kind of remember, I think, that day you were working on that bike. Yeah, we were at. Uh, was it Daytona? I, now I'm starting to forget. Was it Daytona? I remember in the grass. I'm almost going to say it was in Sturgis. Because we were at maybe JMP's lot. You guys maybe didn't run JMP's lot, but I did when I was mm -mm. in uh, Sturgis. So, anyways, that, that stuff happened all the time, you know? Oh, uh, listen, it's simple shit. You know, and just, people think you just throw shit in there and it's going to all fall together. It don't. No. Everything's got to be perfectly balanced. And the other thing is they think that all of us manufacturers out there somehow have this magical book that's all interchangeable. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> we're living off of, like, well, Brad's doing it this way and, and Swift is doing it this way and Iron Horse is doing it this way and all of our po components are supposed to magically just fit together. Because I get that all the time from like, you know, because my, my clutches look similar to BDL's, but I, yep. I did design them differently. Yeah. And they're, they're like, well, why doesn't BDL clutches fit in your, I don't know, why doesn't a Ford part fit in a Chevy? Chevy. I mean, I designed it different for my, my own, yep. you know, a wheel is still round. Yeah. <laughs> and if it ain't in there right, it'll wear the belt the wrong way. That's another yep. thing. People don't know about the tension. If you know, they think if you put the wheel in and it's just an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch, which is that belt will ride a certain way. Yep. And before you know it, it's wearing the pulley and the belt. It's just tearing. Yeah. It's just, but it's an eighth of an inch. The naked of eye wouldn't see that. But you well, got an eighth inch. I could see. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I would. 
me, I'd still measure. Yep. I, I do my measuring on both sides and make sure I'm, I'm square. Yep. You know. Yeah, it's a. It was a. I've had numerous guys go, look at my belt, it's fraying. It's crooked. No, 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 no. You know, that's all. And even that belt, you know, when you get to high RPMs, it, it actually stretches, you know. Well, it's getting hot. The heat yep. from everything. It's rubber, a rubber product, but it's going to stretch. Yep. And, of course, we pound the shit out of them. Yeah, it was uh, interesting times. But then it kind of came to an end. You know, the expendable income kind of went away, and, you know, that whole market kind of, you know, because I worked with the uh, OCC that, you know. Paul, uh, yeah. Yeah, remember that first TV series that they came out with, like, they had that jet bike? Yep. That had. That's in uh, the shop over there. Where? Oh, yeah, over at the. Uh, Restaurant. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that air cleaner on there, that that was a D&M product that I manufactured. Okay. And it was on, like, the TV show. That was kind of cool for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it, you'd be surprised some of the shit that's out there. Yeah. And, you know, there's always someone that's going to do it cheaper. Well, that's another story. <laughs> well, no, but the point being is I can do it cheaper, and that's great. Yeah, it looks just like it, but it ain't like... If you want if you want quality, good quality, you got to pay for it. Yep. I don't care how you look at it. And then quality comes with service. Yep. You know, if you want service, and I mean, like the bikers, they say that like the Harley shops are charging ninety dollars an hour service. I've heard up to like one twenty already. It's ninety over here, and I was like, man, it's that ain't going that that ain't going nowhere. You know, it's the nature of the beast. Yep. You know, and it's harder to work on newer vehicles now too because you know you got the everything's computers. computerized. You got to yep. have the computer, and they lock you out, and you got to have the right software. And, it's not like the old days where you just have an old carburetor to take the bowl off. Well, that's like Franco. He, he has the in uh, the Iron Horse with a 124. Beautiful chopper. You saw it. He wore the tire down. Okay. So he bought the tire. And he's like, we got it. We got the wheel and all off the bike. I said, we're going to change it. He goes, oh, no, no, no. He goes, there's some magnesium rim. You know, it's got to be. I said, we're going to change it. He said, what do you mean? I said, are we going to change it? We can change it. Oh, no, no, no. We, you know, you'll fuck up my rim. I said, Franco, you want to do it? I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was petrified to death of it, but I changed it because Brad okay. showed me how to do it. And it was like the tire was closed, so we couldn't, it, it wouldn't pull out to the rim. What size tire? It was a uh, 300. 300. And he's like, well, how are we going to get air? And I go, relax. I'll, I'll get it. You got a ratchet strap? He's like, well, what are you going to do with that? I go, Franco, give me a ratchet strap. I'll show you how this is I done. I know how this does. I know you how this know, goes. <laughs> you know, you put the strap around it, you ratchet, 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 you see a tire go, Whoa. you know, and then if need be, you put a little starting thing and, yep. you know, and you got the air on it and it pops right up, break the strap and you're good. Yep. And I did it and he's like, where the fuck you learn that from? Dude, you'd be surprised what I watch get done. That's like Brad taught me you know, some of these little screws, the, the metal's so fragile, and with the heat getting in there, you just can't take a Phillips screwdriver and pop them out. Nope. So what happens? The head gets a little stripped. Well, Brad told, taught me to take a wide rubber band. You put the rubber band there and put okay. the, and I had to show Franco that one, because he's all, he, I, that's new to me. I've never, uh, yeah. I've never tried that. Oh yeah. I'm usually the hammer guy, like with the... Uh, rubber band, 90% of the time will work. I usually uh, tap them first before, before I even attempt to, to turn them. But he was like... Well, there's a good question. Why would you use a Phillips screwdriver head on something like that? <laughs> That's what the screw was. I know, but I'm just saying is why not design it with a hex head oh, or, I, you know... Listen, you know, it looks good. It's a flat head. It looks really pretty, that screw. Yeah, I get you. You know, it's not like me and you go, okay, let's let's use the Allen heads because they work better. And, and you know, you get some of these guys who get the books out. You know, they do their own work. They got the books. And it's all great and dandy, but, you know, the book says that you got to put that engine back with a 90-pound torque. So you're going to use the same bolt. You know, nope. Okay. I'm not crazy about that, but okay. But here's the thing. That bolt's been hot, cold, hot, cold. And you want to put 90 pound torque on that mm, it's liable to snap oh no 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 it's good it's good 
You can't imagine how many times I still get hurt. I'm like, oh boy. Well, they they do stretch under yep. under, under heat under uh, load. Yeah, it's just it, even under load. They yeah. they're designed to stretch. But uh, I've seen yeah. it done so many times. I sit there and laugh. I'm like, oh my god. And the know. threads only have so much shear strength in the As thread. I Franco, when we're doing something working on the bike, don't. I'll torque it. I'll tighten them down. Don't fucking touch that bike. The only, you know, <laughs> and I'm probably the worst person at this in the world. The only bolts I will will torque are probably inside the engine. Everything oh. else, I just go by feel. <laughs> well, with Franco, you got to torque everything. So I got gotcha. you. I follow him on that. But with me, it's just like you said. I know where it's at, and it's it's there. Yep. And maybe that comes with experience of tearing things apart, putting them back together, and yeah, you kind of yeah. you, you you get the feel in your hand. You know when that bolt's tight. You yeah. know when the nap don't. It, it's like doing a toilet. People don't understand that sometimes. They go, "I can do the toilet." Okay, go ahead. You know they put the toilet down, put the bolt in there, <laughs> and and the porcelain crack. You can't tighten porcelain. It's, yep. It, there's a feel to where you got to stop. And no, uh, Todd did it. Put a tank on. New new toilet in. Put a tank on. I said, dude, you can't, don't tighten them too tight. Oh, no, no, I got it. You know, he's under there. And it made a funny noise, but nothing cracked. Okay. A day later, Storm sitting on the toilet. <clears throat> he reaches back to go flush the toilet. The whole tank split right down in half. Really? Yep. I like to bust out. He called me up and go, you ain't going to believe what fucking happened. <laughs> the bikes are the same way. They're delicate. There's certain things that need to be, certain pains. You just know where to stop at because... Anything more, you're looking for trouble. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, and the people we dealt with for, you know, they weren't all like. Uh, well, you know, <clears throat> when you were around, I was around. You, people didn't mind you asking a question, you know, or you know, there was people saying, well, why do you do that? You yep. know, it, you didn't mind answering them because a lot of people like, oh, I know how to do it. Or you're like, okay. And even Google has some of the shortcuts, which is great. Guys have done it. They've screwed up, and then they make the video of how they shortcut yeah. it, but they do it right. And and believe me, I, my old Jeep, I followed a, a Google thing, and I got the heater core over there, and come to find out it wasn't the heater core, but thought it was. You know, go to the Jeep dealer, go, $1,900. <laughs> For what? Well, we got to take your whole dash out, and we got to take all this out, and then we can take your radiator out. The heater core. It's going to stay in there, okay? <laughs> I Googled it, and the guy's like, well, this is how you do it. I mean, like, he gave you the explanation of how the Jeep dealer does it, but he said, this is what you do. Cut these two bars right here. He says, and then take your glove box all out. These two lines, you cut them right here, and when you put them back, you're going to use a heater hose, clamps and all, put it back. He says, and once you cut that, undo this screw, it slides right out. Okay, let me try it. Popped out, new one came in. It had the cut ends already. Okay. Put it in, put the hose on, hose on, clamp it, clamp it, clamp it, clamp. Now you got heat. I got to have heat. In Florida. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a few more you need that fucking heater. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, you know, you sometimes you got to look at it and say, okay, if I cut that and cut that, what's going to happen? And it never affected nothing. It really never affected nothing, the two cuts I made. <clears throat> well, anyway, Zach, I appreciate you allowing me to stay here. You know that this, is, been, this no, is your home from home. This must have been, it's got to be what? There was a time before, last year, I mean, there was one or two times prior to that I mm -hmm. came down. Oh, we came down through COVID. Yeah. Me and Brianna did. Yeah, you stayed out on yeah, the beach. Yeah, you got me hooked up. And that was weird because we were there, the, I don't know, Thursday, Friday. And then everybody was scared to go, like they were gonna close down all every the whole place just emptied out. Yep. So me and Brianna had the whole place to ourselves and the beach and all beach, that. yeah. There was nobody around. Yep. So I appreciate that, sir. You know better, you know. What do you want to do? Stay on the beach? Gotcha. <laughs> so we always have a barter system somehow. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll do a favor here and there. I did a favor for him. I, I may need him. I don't know. I might need his trailer, you know. Yeah. It's called the Barter System, and he'll be right there for me. I mean, he's a great guy, so. So. All right, boss. Thank you. We'll do it again. Enjoy and be kind. Traveling Machinist out.